Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you're all in tip top form. And today I'm going to be talking about the series of cover versions that Elton John recorded in the early days of his career. Uh, a lot of people don't know about these and they're certainly worth investigating. By 1969, Elton John was a recording artist. Debut album Empty Sky was released in June 1969 and Three Dog Night covered the track Lady Samantha, but money and mega success was still round the corner. He found himself living a very unrock and roll lifestyle at the time in a two bedroom flat in Frome Court, Northwood Hills, London, uh, living with his mum and her new partner, Fred. Elton and his songwriting lyricist, uh, Bernie Taupin, slept in bunk beds in the second bedroom. And he writes about this period in his autobiography, Me, which you've probably seen on the bookshelves. And it's uh, an entertaining read, certainly far better than the Rocket Man. Uh, film that came out around the same time. He says how they bought books, a stereo, uh, Man Ray poster and joysticks for their room. And he says, Bernie and I could momentarily convince ourselves that we were artists living a bohemian existence at the cutting edge of the counterculture. Or at least we could until the spell was broken by my mum knocking on the bedroom door, asking to know what that bleeding smell was. And by the way, what did we want for our dinner? Tony King at this time worked at the same record label as Elton, DJM, and he also crucially worked for a new company set up by Beatles producer George Martin called Air. And he used his connections at Air Studios and Abbey Road Studios to get Elton some work as a session musician. And it was actually good training for Elton as well as good money, uh, £3 an hour when his retainer from DJM at the time was just £15 a week. It got him used to working with some of the best musicians in the country and also to a strict timetable. And it also meant playing different styles of music with artists as diverse as Tom Jones, uh, The Scaffold, The Hollies. Some of the session work was with the label Marble Arch and uh, they specialised in cheap comp compilations of uh, covers taken from the chart hits of the day. And amazingly, at the height of his fame in the mid-70s, no one seemed to realise that it was Elton singing on such choice cuts on these uh, cash-in comps as Young, Gifted and Black and Spirit in the Sky. The Secret was finally out in 1994 when the cherry red label RPM released the now quite collectible CD Chart Busters Go Pop, 20 legendary covers from 1969-70 as sung by Elton John. And then, in 2005, the Daily Express and Sunday Express newspapers put out a free promotional double CD of 14 of these tracks, which is what I have, and uh, this still crops up fairly regularly at car boot sales. And uh, I'll just highlight the tracks that are on it. Hopefully that picks up fine. Yeah, as I say, the Daily Express CD only had 14 tracks, so it omitted uh, six tracks that had been on the Cherry Red release, Elton John mentions the Marble Arch sessions in his uh, autobiography. He writes, The instructions you would get from producer Alan Caddy were fantastic. One completely insane request after another. Can you sing Young, Gifted and Black? Well, that's not a song that makes an, an enormous amount of sense sung by a white guy from Pinner, but I'll give it a go, and give it a go he does. His singing voice is instantly recognisable as Elton John, and uh, despite apparently having a talent to mimic other singers, the voice never strains on any of the songs and there is an appealing tone to his voice. He enjoyed doing these throwaway covers and uh, so much actually that in the summertime on the Sunday Express CD was actually recorded after your song was released. Certainly these songs have more than a kitsch appeal. I'd class them as similar to say the Beatles BBC radio sessions where they'd knock out covers of old favourites from the Hamburg days. Uh, a nicely put together vinyl comp with liner notes quoting Elton, would certainly appeal as a record store day release. Uh, Elton John, I don't think, would be embarrassed by this, and I think it would stand up okay against, say, uh, Bowie's Pinups, which came out in 1973, uh, Brian Ferry's These Foolish Th Things, which also came out in 1973, and John Lennon's Rock and Roll from 1975. Of course, those albums all had input by the artist on the song choices, but an officially sanctioned Elton John album of the 12 best cuts, say, from his session days would certainly attract the curious. Uh, we've already had Regimental Sergeant Zippo, of course, his 1968 recordings for DJM, 
so it's not beyond the bounds of possibility unless there are insurmountable copyright issues. You can check out most, if not all, of the tracks on the Express Newspapers double CD online. I'll just go through a few of the tracks though, just to give you a flavour of uh, what to expect. Uh, Come and Get It, Paul McCartney's song for Badfinger, and with vocals by David Byron from Uriah Heep and Elton John, is pretty indistinguishable actually from the original. Ironically, the Badfinger version has a more prominent piano. Uh, Cotton Fields, at least instrumentally, loses out against the Beach Boys version, but Elton's voice seriously suits the song. His vocal tone would have easily fitted into the early 70s real Beach Boys, I think. And his vocals also excel on a version of uh, Blue Mink's Good Morning Freedom. Elton's version of Stevie Wonder's Signed, Sealed, Delivered is possibly the best track. There is a southern soul influence seeping through, uh, a relentless guitar riff, some added strings, and Elton really letting rip at the end. Lady Darbonville by uh, Cat Stevens is a song that Elton and Bernie would have been proud to have written. His vocals are exquisite on this one, and it would have slotted in nicely actually on Empty Sky as a contrast to, say, Lady Samantha, and it's the track from that era that I go back to most often. Um, go check the songs out and then uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of them and I think they're pretty good anyway um, I will see you again soon take care now